Hello everybody, uh, I'm Chris Birch, the founder of Modifius. And I'm Virginia, uh, otherwise known as the Jadar of Narrators to the John Carter of Mars fans. I want to welcome you to the first of many uh, Facebook Lives. We're going to be doing lots of short, sharp, one hour uh, experiences around the John Carter of Mars role playing game. Um, the reason we're doing all this is because when I was a kid I used to go and help my grandfather in his second-hand bookstore in Coventry um, when I was a kid. And I get basically paid in comic books like Spider-Man and Weird War and Sergeant Rock, which helped inspire Acting Cthulhu. Uh, but I'd also, as I grew up, would start to bring back all the classic um, novels. So I would bring back Isaac Asimov, Foundation books, uh, I, Robot, uh, John Carter, Conan, um, Thongor Against the Gods, all kinds of gl classic science fantasy books from the, you know, the 70s and 80s. And I would literally bring back a shopping bag full of these and devour them every week. So I had a great education in all those wonderful worlds. And John Carter always stuck with me as this sort of fantastic storyline that was about this very brave guy, he's very honourable, um, you know, fantastic stories about rescuing friends and, um, you know, being very true to the people you love. And, uh, and, and I love the sort of mixture of these sort of ancient ruins, this dying world, you know, beautiful sky ships and uh, gorgeous palaces and, and these sort of ancient ruins full of mystery. So it really stuck with me uh, through my childhood and, and when I came to London, I remember going into a second-hand comic book store here in London and finding all the original novels and I bought all in one go and uh, proceeded to reread them again and, it's, and it always, it didn't date, uh, it's quite a sort of classic, uh, what we actually call science romance back in the day, but it's probably sort of science fantasy as a sort of, um, uh, as a genre now. So um, when Rita actually was at a licensing show, she met the, the owners of the estate, the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate, and we managed to get in touch with them. They just got rights back after the Disney film, and we were able to do a deal to do this fantastic role-playing game. And really, it's been a labour of love. Anyone who's got the books, you'll see that it's a beautiful quality. We went really overboard on creating these landscape books because we just wanted to show off really amazing artwork, uh, great quality dice and accessories, and just really goes to town because it's the first time that kind of world's really come to life, certainly on the tabletop. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to Virginia and the crew who are about to step in, uh, give way, and I hope you enjoy the game and um, try and follow it along, maybe follow on with your group. We're playing uh, in my own group on Tuesday nights, um, so sort of similar adventures. So enjoy and um, I'll leave you to it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So I'll welcome in my amazing players. We have Lloyd. Hello. Ooh, and we have Charlie. Hi. And we have Ali as well. Oh, hello. And very quickly before we start, if you're going to uh, look at this and really enjoy it and you think, hey, I want to play this too, uh, we have a really awesome discount code for you, which is Paul Carter 2019 if you go to the web store and you put this in when you buy the core book or the slipcase set, you can get 10% off up until Sunday. So definitely check that out, it's a really fun game. Uh, so, that aside, we are about to start. So, Lloyd, we have you playing um, Beatrice, mm -hmm. our Earthborn kind of explorer soldier. And then we have Aleph playing Partho Tau, our Okar soldier spy. And then we have Charlie playing um, Halas Sal, who is our... Oh, I've got those mixed up. Sorry, Anna is playing Partho Tau. Oh, yeah. Um, so our kind of honorary helium uh, dignitary. And then Charlie is Halas Sal, who is our kind of soldier spy. Are you ready? Yes. Born so ready. <laughs> Let's do it! Okay. Another Heliumite dignitary has gone missing. The fifth one is TM. One moment you were hearing about the news, and the next thing you know, you were all stood in front of Moore's Kajak, a jet of lesser helium. Within the day you were hired, paid well, and equipped with everything you needed to make the journey to Zadanga and uncover the reason behind these disappearances. The only information that you have to go on is that the dignitaries have gone missing both on the way to Zadanga and within the city proper. Um, you also know that these, what seem to be kidnappings, must be well planned. None of the personal guards that were assigned to these dignitaries saw anything that happened, um, which suggests that it's more than a simple slaver gang, which is 
fairly normal for Zaganga. Sometimes the war hoon are responsible um, for people who go missing on the way, but it seems like there's more than this. The only lead that you have at the moment um, is the name of a Zadangan gang member who's known to occasionally talk to the right price or the right promise of favour. Uh, and he's known to hang out in a restaurant courtyard um, with the rest of his crew. Uh, his name is Karth Val Ab. And you are currently going on your way to meet him. Is there anything you would like to do before you reach the courtyard? Anything you'd like to discuss or ask me? So, um, before we start, yeah. Pathos, what's the plan? How, what's our target of approach? Are we going to go right in? Are we going to well, hold this guy to the wall and tell him to cast a surrender? No, 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 no. There's no need to get sort of physical with him straight away. Of course, we should talk to him first. You know, this is with this our is the... fists. No, 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 no. Well, of course you would. You're both. You're both just <laughs> fighters. You. You don't have the. Uh... A bit the of finesse of a, of a true ambassador. I am um, plenty finesse, but I'm happy to take your <laughs> word for it. Well, let's at least give it a finesse, go. You know, so well, let's let's see what he wants first. Uh, maybe we'll ask him. You know, ask him what his price is. Um, you know, he's he's got to have some information. Let's see what he's got, and then um, if things don't work out, then I will delegate my way down the chain to you It's a guys. finesse, right? <laughs> <laughs> that sort of finesse, That's yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so does that mean you want to all go in together? Or should we split up? Shall I watch from a distance, use my spy tactics, or...? You're the leader, Pathos. Um, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, um, uh, I think it would be a good thing maybe to have a man on the outside. It's always good to get the drop. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, maybe let's give that a go. All right. Okay. okay. Plan. I don't know why I don't know. Yeah, I suppose I am the voice sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Beatrice and uh, Beatrice and Partho are going ahead, and mm -hmm. then you're staying behind Hallis to, mm -hmm. to watch. To keep an eye on things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you you start dropping back behind the group before you approach <clears throat> the courtyard, just to make sure that nobody spots that you're to me together on your approach. Um, Partho and Beatrice, you make your way to the courtyard, and it's very grand. It's very very open. It's in the middle of this kind of large plaza. And you can see there are people bringing food out, um, as very large kind of open tables. And it's not difficult to spot the man that you're looking for, even though you don't know him by face. Um, he is sat at a table. Um, he's a kind of stoke-faced uh, red Martian, much slimmer build than you would expect for somebody that you've heard has got such a reputation. He's wearing a very simple leather harness. There's no markings on any of the metal. And he's drinking from a silvered cup. Um, and he's surrounded uh, by about six or seven other people. There's a few women, all of which are carrying swords with the same kind of um, plain harnesses, uh, and three or four men as well who are sat around. And they, they are sat around this table talking to him, and he's very obviously the seat of this table. Um, that's all you can see from the distance. So there are a few of his crew here, it seems. So your, your leads were correct in that this is where he tends to kind of hold his meetings, quite out in the open, uh, as you begin to approach the kind of inner boundaries of this courtyard. Cool. Um, I will just um, saunter straight up to him. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, you know, I mean, you've got to, haven't you? You know, go show strength, strength recognizes strength. Just gonna walk right in there? Yeah, just gonna walk right in. Um, let's go. You know, let, let's, let's do it. So. Um, yeah, I'm just going to stroll straight up, and um, his name is Karth? Was it? Karth. 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 Um, Karth, my name is Partho Tal. Um, I believe you're a man to speak to for the goings on around here. So as you catch him, he's kind of halfway through, taking a sip, and he drinks a bit longer. He's saying just what you can only imagine is some kind of wine, and puts it back down on the table. And the rest of his crew have fallen silent as they're kind of watching, no one's got hands on swords, they're all just kind of sitting, watching. And he eventually looks up at you and says, that depends on what species you wish to talk about. Um, I will ostentatiously um, flip my uh, sort of little skirts that I've got dangling off my harness around the side and uh, drag up a chair and sit down, uh, crossing my legs and um, just uh, sort of settling myself in um, to get his attention um, and then I will say we have heard tales of dignitaries such as myself uh, going missing around here and um, I would like to know what information you have regarding these disappearances. These are not mere slaver kidnappings, um, they must be something bigger behind it 
and as a man in the know, I uh, was hoping you might be able to help us with that. He takes a moment and you can see him kind of taking in the information and considering it. He leans forward and he says, I have heard of these disappearances. How incredibly tragic. I can't say that I have anything to do with them, however, if that is what you are insinuating. And he kind of looks around at the rest of the crew who are starting to look a bit wary. Beatrice, what are you doing? Did you follow up with well, I, Arthur? I, I, we did not make the agreement of good cop, bad cop in this one. So <laughs> I'm not going to speak, but if I think so, I'm going to stand behind Patho and keep an eye on all the others because there's seven of them and one of me and I think that war goes wild. But I know I've got backup coming, so I'm just going to keep play cool and just keep an eye out. Okay, so you're kind of standing behind like the muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Um, and and the what credibility is... too. <laughs> what is Hallis doing? Hallis is currently looking to see if there is anyone sort of mirroring what he's doing. So if there's people that these guys haven't noticed, sort of further back, watching them, like hidden blades in the crowd, sort of being a bit more cautious, and also planning their route of escape, because I'm pretty sure you're going to get punched. Working <laughs> <laughs> so, it out. Okay, so you, you see this approach happen, and you see um, Partho pull up the chair and sit down, and Beatrice standing behind. Um, you can make the first roll of the session then if you're having a look for that. I would love to. So I'm going to say this is going to be uh, cunning and reason, because you're looking out for kind of sneaky people by yourself, you're, you're thinking about what you would pick up on if you were watching you, yeah. which is basically what you're doing. Uh, it's going to be difficulty one, because you okay. know how to look for these things. So if you add those two um, attributes together, that and then... Me 15. 15. 15. 20. So I got a 9 and a 10. 9 and a 10. So that is two successes. It's yes. underneath your target number. So you do get a point of momentum for yourself. Oh, perfect. Cool. Um, you have a look round and it takes you a minute to spot them. They're good. Um, there, there is a woman standing the opposite side of the courtyard. So that way you are further back from it. Um, it looks like at first she's just enjoying something to eat. And you actually spot that every now and then she looks up and she's very intently watching what's going on before she goes back to eating. And she's eating very, very slowly. Um, you instantly spot that she's most likely involved with these people and there's probably some kind of lookout. Um, she's further back though. She's about the same distance that you are from them, but the other side. Okay. So could I start circling around to sort of towards Yeah, you can her. start moving yeah. away start through the crowd. start sneaking away through the crowd. Yeah, so you can do that for now. Uh, so you've... Still in the conversation. Still in um, conversation. Of course I would never presume to insinuate um, that you would be involved at all, but that's not necessarily to say that you may not have heard rumours or stories or any other information that might be able to lead us further to find the ones that are really responsible. Rumours and stories are all good, but they all come at a price. Of course. Name yours. I can name my price, you may not be able to afford my price. What do you offer? Well, um, I offer my services such as they are, is all I really have to offer. Um, I have connections and secrets of my own, uh, perhaps a trade. I do enjoy trades. Which connections do you trade? Um, well, as an honorary emissary of Helium, uh, I have um, connections within the Helium court, you know, far more um, dignified places than these, um, perhaps they would be of use to you. Perhaps they would. Walk with me. Sure. Um, and he, he stands up, mm -hmm. as I assume that you do as well. Yep. He walks around to you, Beatrice. Mm -hmm. You've been very quiet. I'm very thirsty and no one's offered me a drink. Please, <laughs> help yourself at the table. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> And you, you pick up a glass. Mm -hmm. Preferably one of the other people's glasses I pick up. The one that's full that I've not drank yet. I'm going to grab one of those. <laughs> there is a Red Martian there who is, takes a moment to go in and then realises that you've been told to take a drink and therefore doesn't say anything. Mm, I'll give him a wink. I say, damn it. You are not from around here? No, I'm quite far away. Quite far away from? I'm, I'm not from here. I'm, Quite far away. Mm -hmm. 
you see, he's usually very keenly, and he's he's spotted something. Mm -hmm. He turns back and he he begins to kind of walk around this this courtyard with you. I have heard of these disappearances. My crew are not responsible. So do your best not to pin this on me. I may know who might be responsible, perhaps, but I need certain assurances and some payment before I can tell you any more. And what would you ask for in payment? In payment? Well, I would like access to some of those connections. There are certain guilds in which I am interested in, in Helium. Sure. Um, can I use um, one diplomat to another at this point? You can. Um, uh, so it's uh, one of my um, uh, talents. So um, uh, the circumstances when attempting to learn the diplomat's agenda, and the effect is when I attempt to discover the agenda of another character, on a successful test I can gain one momentum to ask a clarifying question of the narrator as per the obtained information momentum state. Yeah, cool. So that so. just acts so when you have momentum, you can use it to, uh, to so you can spend it to ask me a question, yeah. and I have to be truthful in what I answer. I yeah. can be vague. But you know, okay. can do that. So you're trying to figure out, what is it trying to figure out? What is it he wants? Or... So what I'm trying to figure out is whether he's playing me or not. What his agenda is. Like, is he trying to use me? Is he lying to me? Um, or is he actually just not involved? And maybe this is a fair deal. I'm trying to gauge the... How, how truthful um, he's being and if he actually knows anything. Yeah, if he actually knows anything, if he's just playing us or, um, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, in that case then, I'd say that you're going to have to roll something with empathy because you're yeah. trying to figure out what he's doing. But I'll let you pick the other attribute. Um, you can tell me why you why you've used that one. I think it should probably be either reason or cunning. I'm going to go with reason because this is kind of my stock and trade, so it's kind of a learned skill. And um, I think, yeah, I'm just kind of trying to figure him out. So, yeah, I'd say empathy and reason, which would put me on 12 altogether. On 12, okay. So I am going to make this a toad, because he is yeah. purposely being a little bit not quite forward with you, um, yeah. in the hopes that you're going to offer him something, perhaps. Or So I'm going to say that this is going to be... It's going to be difficulty for one for him to try and yep. oppose you, um, and it's going to be difficulty one for you to try and do it to him. Okay. And then we work it out based on who gets more successes or who generates more momentum. So. Okay, cool. Um, oh, nice. So that's a uh, 12 and an 11 for me, which is um, three successes. Three successes. Two for the four and one for the 11. Let's just grab his stuff up and have a look here. Um, so he's going to be using cunning and empathy, which is 12 for him. So he only gets one success. Okay. You generated how many, sorry? Uh, three. Three, so you get two points of momentum. Cool. Um, what did you want to ask me then? Um, so what I wanted to ask you, I suppose if I'm going to put it concisely, um, is he lying about having information? Um, uh, so there's one question. What you can spend momentum afterwards to keep asking me some more questions if you want to. It's just this one is yeah. the one that you get. From oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess um, two questions. Is he lying about having information and is he lying about being involved? Okay, so you have to spend more momentum. Yeah, so I'll spend, I'll spend more. Yeah. I think that's money well spent. Um, he's not lying. He's far too interested in seeing what you can offer him. Okay. to be lying. You suspect that if he was, he might have just taken the first thing that you said yeah. and he'd, he'd be on his way and so would you by now. Um, sorry, the second one was... Um, is he lying about being involved? He's not. He's not lying. Okay. Um, you can see that there, there's almost a concern there at the idea that somebody thinks he is involved. Yeah. Um, but it's clear that he knows something about what's going on. It's just not to do with him. Okay. This, this feels like a deal that I'm willing to make, then. Okay. Um, so you're, you're so, yeah. offering him um, So needs. certainly I can put you in touch with my contacts in Helium, um, and um, provided you can provide information uh, for us on who we can speak to about these disappearances, and who might be involved. Discretion is something I take very seriously, so you and your friend here, I believe that it is somebody else attached to the larger outfit of this gang. My crew are my crew and they do as I say, but there are many factions within us. 
There is a woman, Okar, yellow skin, called Celia. She runs another crew of part of a large gang. And she's been taking a side job. She wouldn't tell me what it was. But she was adamant that once it was complete, it would raise her through the ranks. See, and where might I find this Okar woman? Well, I know you may find her. You may not want to find her. I warn you that. But in order for me to tell you where she is, I need an assurance. Oh. She was once very close to me. And should she get in the way of your investigating of her goings on, she is the confrontational type. And so I ask that you spare her life should she attempt to hinder you. While I can assure you that we will do our best, of course in matters such as these there are no guarantees. I need a guarantee. You cannot. I care very deeply for her. I guarantee that we will not. We will spare her life if the time comes. If I hear otherwise, I will find you. While you're in the city, in my city. On the other side of the city, where the disused warehouses are, there is a building. It was once uh, an airship dock at one point. Now it's used to store goods, mostly our goods or her goods. She has been frequenting that, from what I've been told, and from the tales that I've put in. Far often than we frequent any of the houses in which we store our stolen goods. You may find her there, if not, you may find what she's up to. I would like to know what she's up to, because quite frankly I would like to on it, and if she is the one behind these disappearances, we could do with less attention being drawn to Zadanga at this present moment in time. Very good. Um... We should probably go and find out what we can find out first, and then obviously we can talk later. You'll have our contacts in Helium to speak to in the meantime, and um, do some business with them as required. And um, I believe this concludes our conversation. I believe it does. And he just turns and begins to walk back to the crew. You see all of this happen, um, Hallis. You see them get up and begin to kind of circle around the courtyard. Is there anything that you want to do? As you see, he walks off and they, where are you guys going? Back towards where Hallis is? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of walking back with him to where Beatrice is sat having someone else's drink. Uh, um, I'm going to be looking to sort of watch how he acts, whether he's really twitchy, whether he gets back to his henchmen and they will go charging off somewhere. I want to see when he starts shouting orders at people, I want to see what he does, because okay. I think I've sort of seen them talking and I want to see how that's affected them, you know. He looks very calm, he walks back okay. to his seat, he sits down, somebody pours him some more wine, and he continues whatever conversation he was having before. Um, Beatrice, you're probably still sat down at this table. I'm indulging them on how soccer works. No. <laughs> um, you've currently got uh, there's um, two Red Martian women and a, and a Red Martian man who are sitting there really engrossed and they're talking to you about the rule set. Mm -hmm. So you kick the you kick the ball. Yes, you kick the ball and you try to get it through the goal without using a sword or a gun to shoot the people. You try and do it without touching them. I mean, you can touch them if you want to tackle them when at the ball, but you don't break a leg. At least not on purpose. So there are no weapons. But there are no weapons. Just your feet and your skill. I see. This does not sound like the, the game for fighters. This sounds like... On the contrary. Fighters and fakers are very good at this game. Oh, you're back. Uh, I am. Are you talking about soccer again? You know what? At some point, I will make it popular. <laughs> I don't know how long it'll take, but I will do this. This will be my mark upon Basu. <laughs> Wait and see. Shall we go? Indeed we shall. Um, thank you for your time, and we will be in touch. And another ostentatious flick. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, so you, you begin to make your way back out of the courtyard, and um, Hamas is not where you left him, but I imagine you come back around come back, yeah, at yeah. some point in a completely different direction. <laughs> um, but you've been watching them this whole time, and you, you meet up. So you now know where this uh, warehouse is, you've been directed to it. Is there anything else you wish to do? Are you going to head straight there, or because you want to kind of well, I will, and have a look around and see I will fill the guys in on the information that I've gleaned, and um, then maybe you guys can come up with a plan on spying on the warehouse. That is not my speciality. Could you clarify the part where you said that we will guarantee that no harm will come to this person? Yeah. <laughs> the guarantee I made was that um, we would not kill her. Yes. And that no harm would come to her, you know, from our side of things. Um, I mean, it was a guarantee I had to make, I'm sorry to say. Um, it's not to say that we can't report her to the proper authorities and hand her over. We just can't kill her. She might not be the guilty one, we don't know yet. You can't just go in there swinging fists and hoping for the best. I have not lived on Basu for very long. <laughs> clearly the experts, but I've come to see things in their Basunian way in that when usually you ask people questions and they are a little bit agitated, someone tends to die. <laughs> well, this is the thing. It's it's an it's an honor thing. I've made him an honourable promise, and we must stick to that. I am um, so happy to try my best. Don't try, do. <laughs> is that an honour, Patho? That's a strong suggestion as to the best way to behave on Basu. I'll keep this in mind. <laughs> so, any idea for So yeah, what's the plan, guys? Spying in. So, uh, I guess we go scout it out. We go do a retcon, we go look at it all, we go try and find out what this building looks like. I like this we word, it's very we. Yes. We're a team for now. Mm. Why don't you do the scouting ahead? <laughs> and then when you and are bored of a drink, I'll go get a drink and then we can go in. I'm pretty sure, sure what's happened there. I like this plan. Um, this sounds like an excellent I am on the fence about it. <laughs> we're not going very far, just scout in, go so. recon, find out how we can get in, okay. and get out, and then let us know. Fine, you guys go, put your feet up, I will do all the work, you go <laughs> relax. That's why we love traveling the others. And off yeah. I go. Okay, so you guys are going to say not too far away, but, but close enough. Yeah. Okay, so, um, Hallis, you start making your way through the city streets. And it's fairly busy, it's kind of the afternoon, people are still out, and you start making your way over to that kind of more disused, slightly run-down um, part of Zadanga, where this warehouse is said to be. Um, and you're scanning the buildings, you're looking for the one that has the sector's description, um, and you spot it over in the distance. And you, you walk through, did you want to go up to the building, or do you want to look at it from a distance? You tell me what it is that you want. I want to look at it from a distance. I want to be able to be obscured, so that if I am to go there later, they won't recognise me as having been staring at their building. Okay, I believe you have a talent for that, don't I you? I have a fitting in. So, um, I'm adept at convincing others to consider you as one of their own. Using my skin paints and disguises, I can walk the cities of Barsoom without drawing attention. Yeah. So as long as I am hiding, I can pose as a member of any race or culture with the same basic language and physical form without fear of casual discovery. Okay, so you're going to maybe take some time darting yes. to this she's building, and you start putting the skin paint on, um, changing up what, kind of how, how your harness sits and stuff like that to make yourself, are you going Red Martian? Or I'll go Red Martian. Going yeah. Red Martian. Okay, so you transform yourself mm -hmm. into almost something that's completely different. Um, and Without really close up inspection, no one's going to guess that you are not who you currently oh, present as. Okay. Um, so you start making your way, and you can spot the building now. You're a bit closer, and it looks like it was once an airship dock. Um, it's a much taller building, but it's quite wide, and you can see at the top the old kind of docking area where an airship would come in, and people could load and offload. Um, you don't see much at the minute from a casual glance, but is there anything you're looking for? I am looking for guards, mostly. Looking for guards. Okay, can you make me, um, it's going to be difficulty two. Mm -hmm. um, and how, how are you doing this? 
Uh, I'm assuming I'm going to be using reason to work out where the best place the cards would go, yeah. and then cunning because this is my thing. This is your thing. This is Absolutely. Thing. So it's going to cool. be difficulty two. Uh, I will spend the momentum. Yeah. Get an extra dice. Get an extra dice. It's all good. Uh, yeah. So uh, I am looking for under fifteens. I got a sixteen, a ten, and a seven. Okay, so how many successes? That is you three successes. Three successes. You get a point of momentum, so you earn that Perfect. momentum back. Straight on back. Um, from where you are, you, you kind of go up onto another building so you can get a proper view down onto the ground. It looks like there is a front entrance which is guarded by um, three Red Martian guards. There are two that are stationary and one that appears to kind of um, walk around across around the front. Um, they are they're not overly obvious. Um, the two that are actually at the front look like they're just kind of chatting and kind of relaxing, they look quite casual. And the other one kind of wandered, just kind of wanders back and forth. Occasionally he goes off between some of the other buildings, but he does come back. Doesn't seem to have like a set patrol route. Okay. Um, there doesn't appear to be a back entrance that you can see, or at least there's nobody around where that would be. Um, you do spot some movement on the roof though. Okay, any human shape movement or? Do you want to spend the momentum to ask me? You've got, yes, you got the attendant information spent, so. I definitely want to know. Um, from a distance at first, it kind of looks like you can make out arms and walking, and then you realise the gate is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not something walking entirely on two legs. Every now and then, there is the, the two upper limbs come down. But they're just they're so far on the edge of the roof, but with the sun up behind, they're kind of silhouetted. Um, that it looks like they've got some kind of guard animal. Okay, uh, I think that's enough to spook me and I'm going to go for backup. Okay. <laughs> I think I've seen enough to know that it's not a place I want to be going on my own. So, tell oh. me, uh, Beatrice and uh, Partho, where are you right now? We're having a very dignified drink in a nearby cafe. Okay. Um, uh, although it's not as dignified as I would like, because I'm guessing the cafe is not in a great area. Uh. It's not amazing. You've probably been able to get some very kind of cheap, uh, cheap wines, um, maybe some folk steak or callet steak that you're kind of picking out as you go. Um, what are you guys talking about while you're while you're sitting here? So, actual fact here. What do you think of Hannes? Um, I mean. <laughs> A spy is inherently somewhat dishonourable. I mean, yes. you know, this is not a profession for, um, you know, those of strong moral compass. Um, so, mm, my mind is yet to be made up. So as, you, as you're saying this, Hannes, you walk around the corner, and they're, they're sat there drinking and eating and... And they see me walk around the corner? Or am uh, I sneaking up halfway through this conversation? Yeah. I want to sneak halfway through this conversation. Okay, I need, I need you to roll um, be cunning and, I'm going to say cunning and daring, cunning and daring. Cunning cunning and daring. because daring is what we use for movement. Cunning and daring. And it's going to be difficulty one for you to sneak up. And I want both of you guys to roll me um, a. Can you tell me, what are you. Six passive, so let's go for. Let's go for cunning and. Let's go for cunning and empathy. Alright. Okay. You've got to roll pose, and it's difficult to two for the both of you. Okay. okay. So, I think I'm a 13. I'm really good. I'm I am really, really bad. Really bad? <laughs> I got um, one success. Okay. I've got four successes. Minus two means I've got two successes. Okay, uh -huh. so you've got two successes. It's yes. two points of momentum for you. Does anyone roll complications by um, chance? I, uh, How many chances have we got? Two. Uh, so you've got, uh, I've got a 20 and a 15, so that is zero successes and one complication for me. I have a 20 and a 7, one success and a complication. Okay, so Beatrice, you you notice um, Hallis coming around the corner and stop. You carry on talking and you just overhear that bit about um, people, like, not such moral The moral, the moral compass, yeah. Um, <laughs> and you think you've already got it until just as you're saying it, you trip. <laughs> it's like, you don't fall flat on your face, you kind of like knock a nearby kind of chair that's there, mm -hmm. and then it's really obvious that you're here and you have caused a little bit of a scene in this cafe, yeah. but you are back here with new information. Hi. Oh, hi. Um, oh, sorry, hi. I, didn't, I didn't see you. Yeah, that. no, that's fine, I noticed. <laughs> 
Well, it's just awkward, isn't it? Beatrice, I'm glad you had my back. Uh, always! <laughs> always! I would, uh, I, there's no one I would trust more than you and Oka by my side. Uh, it's probably sure. good to note that um, you currently, currently looks like a red Martian. Yeah. You can still recognise the face because you know each other well, but yeah. Yeah. The, the skin is different. I have to say, I like the new change. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, no, I just sort of fell into a pot and decided this was it. Yeah. Red Drake, red, red looks good in Thank you, it's pretty really <laughs> big, isn't it? <laughs> it is really good. Okay, so we're down, Princess. Okay. <laughs> Where are we going? What's up? Uh, so I went to go see this place, and it is large and scary, and they have some guards that don't seem to be doing any kind of planned patrols, but they are patrolling around. There is something that isn't human that also seems to be part of the guard. I couldn't see that well. The light was in my eyes. But there's bad things there. How's the roof access? The roof access is guarded. Um, how's the roof access? Um, it's quite a tall building, so you haven't really got a way to get there, short of scaling the side of the building. How tall is the building? <laughs> um, maybe seven or eight stories. It was an airship dock. That's, that's pretty tall. That's pretty how tall. tall is the building if I jump? <laughs> Probably won't be able to get to it. You can probably like jump halfway up. Oh, but you're not going to be able yeah. to get all the way up there. Mm, all right. So, yeah, I, I've gone to discover these things and I couldn't get any closer without getting into a scuffle, and that is not my thing to do. So, um, um, so how many guards are we talking? It looks like there were two guards in the front gate, one on patrol, one thing guarding the roof, and then that was all I could see. There might be more inside, there might be more around the other side of the building. I mean, you know, that's even numbers. We should... You're suggesting we go for a fight? Strong, strong fight to, like, Beatrice. Well, let's, let's, put, then... let's, put, let's put the things on scale. We can march in, beating the living daylight of anything in front of us. Probably we can not. sneak in, possibly, or we could talk our way in. Which would you prefer? Hmm. We have a connection now in Calf. We could probably try and yeah. I feel like that's going to go very well for us, or very badly. Or we can yes, we can yes. fly an airship right above it, jump off, and land on the roof. If the roof is guarded, then that's going to be the same. Outcome. We'll just take them out where we land. One enemy is better than three enemies. Depends on size. <laughs> One thing to bear okay. in mind is that you are here as emissaries of Helium, currently in disguise. So much as Zabanga yeah. is technically a vassal state of Helium, mm -hmm. there is still a lot of unrest about Helium's position in ruling Zabanga. So there is a political aspect to this as well. So uh, we're going to go in subtly. So mm -hmm. airship drop or quietly walk into the door? Not my methods. Which, by the way, are the better methods. I'm happy to go with yours though, just for today. Um, I think we should try and talk our way in at least, um, and then if we get refused, we can ish a drop. Why not both at the same time? I suppose we could. I feel like an airdrop isn't the most subtle listen, thing. Listen, <laughs> listen. It's pretty noticeable. I haven't punched anyone in a day. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? I am being really good. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> right, so. So. Um, what are you guys doing? We're going to walk our way in. Well, let's, way. let's try and talk yeah. our way. Okay. Yeah. You, you make your way there. It's easy enough. Hamas can show you the way. Um, and you get a couple of buildings back from one of the front entrances. And you can see the two guards who are standing there chatting, and the one that's kind of being a very lazy on patrol route around the outside. Okay. Um, I will, with an arrogant swish of my skirts, <laughs> um, my little <laughs> stride straight up to the doors, and um, uh, excuse me, out of the way. Uh, as you do that, there's, there's there's a moment where you they kind of don't react and then they do. It's like, who are you? Um, I am. Uh, I have been sent um, by. Sorry, I've forgotten the name. Um, oh. but, by not Karth, uh, who's the... Uh, Isalia. Um, Isalia. I've been sent by Isalia to inspect the latest shipment. Uh, I need to do a stock count and I need to have the information back to her as soon as possible. Um, please get out of the way. He draws a sword and walks up. Uh, you're blatantly lying to him, so I need you yeah. to roll. Um, <laughs> I'm blatantly lying to him. You're going to have to roll cunning and empathy for me. And this is okay, going sure. uh, to be difficulty three. 
Okay, um, can I use Passion Iterator on that? Oh no, because I'm not using Passion, am I? Um, okay. Would you um, rather use Passion? Is it quite cunning and Passion? Um, I would rather, but I don't think it's appropriate. Okay. Um, I will have difficulty three, you say? Difficulty three. Uh, I'm going to take, can I take, uh, I'll spend a momentum and a yeah. threat. Is that okay? Momentum and a uh, threat, so you want two dice. Yeah, I'll take two extra okay, dice on that one. happily take that threat. Um, this may have been a mistake. Before. Just roll all, all successes, uh, problem solved. Like that. Like that, mm. all successes. All uh, successes. Great, so that's four successes. Uh, hang on. Uh, yeah, four successes. Okay, so in which case, take a point of momentum back. Cool. Um, and you, you say this with such authority and conviction that he, he draws the sword out and looks you over and says, haven't seen you around here before, but I suppose... As long as you don't have to deal with the enforcers, it's... You haven't seen me because I'm too important to normally come down and do these things, but she asked me specifically, so I've conceded. Now please, let me get on with it. Puts the sword away and just says, well, go ahead. Um, I right. take the lead and as I'm walking through, do, what do you say about the enforcers? <laughs> so I was going to ask about that. I know, it's okay, it's too late, I'm already going through the door, let's just pretend okay. it's fine. We, we'll just keep talking our way through things. It's worked for me like literally my entire life, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you walk in through this warehouse and it's um, like wide open, there's like almost like a small like hangar-like um, section which is mostly empty, mm -hmm. uh, which leads off into a kind of corridor and as, as you go through there's a door to the left and it looks like there's no, there's no, there's no door, it's just a door frame. There's kind of stone um, architecture. There's a little bit of kind of fancy engravings around the door edges, but not so much. It was an industrial building, so there's not too much kind of beauty put into it. Um, that looks like an office. You can see there are some papers, there is a desk been set up, um, and then the corridor continues forward as well. Do we know what floor she's on? I've got absolutely no idea. Um, <laughs> uh, anybody got some inspiration? I think we should probably head towards the upstairs, maybe? Um, offices. I don't know. This is what you do. It's something you do all the time. <laughs> no, it's talking my way through things. This is you're, you're the you're the spy. You should know how to find you your way to, around. You they they keep going here. Here. No, <laughs> let's, let's keep going until yeah. we see something that we might recognize. So you go yeah. past the office. And you carry on through um, this very very large entrance way, and you find yourself in what looks to be um, kind of like the first of a large storeroom. And in here, you can see there's loads of boxes. Um, there's some food stores here. It also looks like there's some statues. Um, there are a few kind of pouches in a kind of box with some kind of uh, straw coming out of it. It looks like this is some kind of goods hall. If this is where they're storing stuff that they're getting on heists or as part of deals, it looks like well, that's what this is. Um, should we start having a look at Yeah, start yeah, rooting through, through things. things. Okay, you start, yeah. you start rooting through. Should we, should we be rubbing the team? So we're not rubbing. We're looking. We're, for no, we're looking for evidence. I suppose you're right. Sure, let's take a look around. But okay. Crack some boxes. Uh, what, are you looking for anything in particular, or are you just you just want to see if you find anything interesting? Um, there wondering. must be something relating to the missing this. Yeah, this is what we're looking for, there. right? So we're looking for um, maybe artifacts of office or anything you know seals that they may have been carrying, anything that may have been taken from them as part of their abduction. Um, Along those lines, it's maybe it might be worth having a look back in that office section. I was just thinking if there's paperwork or anything along those lines. I can dart back and have a look. Yeah, you will be. Yeah. Okay. I will dart back while these guys start breaking out the boxes. Okay, in which case, um, so you dart back, Hannes, to the, to the office. It's not, it's not a long walk, it's like two minutes down the corridor. Okay. And you go in, and it's very makeshift. There is some kind of desk set up, there's a bunch of papers dumped on it. Um, it looks like there is um, some clothing in here as well that's kind of been tossed to the side. Uh, if you just make me, uh, I'll let you pick what attributes you want to use, but if you're just having a rifle around. How uh, carefully you being is probably part of that as well. I'm being very careful, and, but I think I want to focus on the papers first. Okay. Okay, so do I just look at them, or do I...? Uh, you can, I, I, if you want to spend some uh, momentum, or pay me some threat, I can just tell you what's on the papers, because they're quite uh, easy to pick I'll up. I'll give you some threat. Okay, so I'll, I'll take one for now, and then if you want to ask more questions, you can let me know. So you pick them up and you go through. A few of them look like they're just like goods charters, so it's, it's talking about um, statues. It looks like they've been evaluating some stuff. Um, you start going through them, and there is um, 
a note of some kind. And it's, it's hand penned in very scrawl handwriting, and it, it reads um, Once they, it's about the capital, um, are done with the captives, those who survive the ransom, it must look like a kidnapping. They are all treated with the same story. So there should be no doubt as to what happened. Once this is done, move and dig new cables. I'm going to take that immediately to these guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You guys are in this kind of storeroom. Um, so if I can get you both to roll, let's go for cunning and uh, reason. As you kind of, I guess, a little yeah. bit more methodically kind of have a look at things. So you're looking for... Um, dignitary, like official items, things like that, right? Yeah, basically anything that would tie what they have here to the disappearances, right? Can I assist? Uh, you can do, yeah. So you want to lead this one? Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, so you're rolling the main test, so you're adding your uh, attributes together, you're rolling 2d20. If you're yeah. assisting, you roll 1d20, but you do your own test. So this is going to be, uh, I'm going to say difficulty 2. Two successes. Um, a complication, and uh, so a 20 and a 19. 20 and a 19. So, no successes. No successes, just a complication. <laughs> 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 yeah, as far as I think it's not quite open. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you start, you start looking oh, through, nice. and um, you pick something up, and you, you go to hand it over to Partho, and as you do, you, you kind of um, pull back this. It's like a large cage that's got this cloth covered over it, and you kind of pull it back, hoping maybe you'll find somebody. And I'm going to spend some threat to add to that complication. <laughs> oh. um, you make a very big mistake. As you open it, you f before, you, before you hear it or see it, you feel this hot breath. Before a large gaping maw opens up and roars in your face. And you hear it echoing. You hear this from the other side of the room. And you can hear it down the corridor. As a large, lumbering, white creature comes rolling out of this, what's clearly an unlocked cage. Um, this is a white ape, and you recognise it immediately. Um, and it's not until it, it comes out and it stands up to its full height that you realise quite how large this thing is. And it's huge. This is one of the most terrifying creatures on Barsoom. Um, and it's going to go in and try to grab for you. Right, okay. Um, um. So, it, it goes in with one of its kind of large hands and just tries to flatten you with it as you've disturbed it in its cage. Um, you start to wonder what the enforcers might be. Yeah, I was just thinking we may have just found <laughs> the, uh, the enforcer. So, um, we, are, we are now in combat, so what normally yep. happens here is that normally you guys will take the first turn, you will have your turn, and then all of my characters will go. But since you disturbed the white ape, and I spent the threat, I'm gonna take the chance to go first, and then it will pass back over to you guys unless I choose to interrupt your turns. Okay. So this is gonna be a melee attack, so you do get to defend. Yep. Um, it's gonna try and swing at you, so how are you trying to defend from this? Um, so, I'm just going to try and defend, um, I'm just gonna go with daring and might. Um, I'm just jumping back as hard as I can in a panic, um, because okay. there is no there is no logic, reason, passion, anything behind any of this. This is just diving out of the way. Awesome. I'm going to spend um, uh, one point of threat to roll an extra dice because great. you've disturbed it and yeah. it doesn't recognise you and you're not meant to be here. Okay. If you'd like to spend threat on my momentum. I should probably spend some momentum. That's my adrenaline kicking in. Okay, so it's going to be uh, difficulty one for it yeah. to try and hit you, but it's going to be difficulty two for you to try and jump out of the way because it's okay. caught you by surprise. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, right, so, um, Darien Lights, right, 11. Yeah, not bad. Um, that would be three successes. Three right? successes, okay, I got four successes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not good. Um, so I minus your momentum off of mine, so I, okay. I get two points of threat back yeah. for me. Uh, it is going to hit you, unfortunately. Okay. Um, it does hurt just a bit. So, just, um, <laughs> um, let me see. Pardon uh, <coughs> me, sorry. Let's go. So, I'm going to roll uh, four challenge dice as it literally just goes to oh. like sheer force. <laughs> okay, so that 
that is three, four, that is five points of stress. Oh, wow. Just from the regular attack. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you defend with? You defended with my um, engineering. Yeah, my engineering. Yeah, <coughs> so you so. can distribute that stress across either of the two stress tracks that that affects. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to put um I think I'm gonna put three of that on fear and two of it on injury. Okay. Um yeah, that was not my finest So what's <laughs> happening? If you take five points of stress at once, yeah. or you fill your stress track, or you take stress once you've filled a stress track, mm -hmm. um, you take something called an affliction. Okay. <coughs> so, you have to pick which of those um, ones you want to take an affliction on. Um, I am going to take it on. Um, I'll take it on fear. I'll take it on a um, trauma. Okay, so if you just tick off one of those afflictions for me. Yep. Any of your tests that use either of those attributes. Yep. Uh, which if you could just call out for the wonderful people Yeah, watching. so it's a, that's daring and passion. Yeah, so uh, those tests so. are increased by one in difficulty when you use those attributes. Oh, uh, right, okay, I probably shouldn't have put that on, never mind. That's okay, I mean, it's, yeah. it's scary, the things just jumps yeah, out. Yeah, no, that's you. it, yeah, I'm twitchy you now. So you jump yeah. straight back and it's over to you guys. Who would like to act for us? Yeah? Yeah, you jump straight into it. What is the biggest thing I can lift at this one from where I'm standing? Because well, I'm you're standing, what's your might? My might is eight. Might is eight. Um, I need something big that I want to throw at this creature. Uh, that will can, break on its face. You can probably pick up one of the kind of um, like bus statues that are there. Oh, perfect. So it's, it's probably made of marble. You're pretty Ooh. strong because you're, I mean, you're earth form, so you've got even more strength than, than the other guys here. So I'd say that you can probably pick that up and throw it. It's going to be a bit more difficult than a regular kind of like attack. But I'm going to grab the biggest thing. I'm going to scream, Patos, run! And I'm going to throw it at the creature's face to keep it distracted so Pat can get out of there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say this is difficulty two. Mm -hmm. um, and as opposed, the creature is going to try and move out of the way. It's just shout and it turns its attention to you. Um, it's going to be difficulty two for it to move out of the way as well because it's quite a big, lumbering beast. Not so fair. Uh, do you want to buy any dice? I'm not going to buy I any. have two momentum. I'm saving nice. one. I'm going to spend one. Okay. To actually, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll spend one to buy some dice. And I will take one from, give you one to let you roll another one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll here. So it's going to try, what, what are you rolling for this? Might and. Um, might and, might and, ooh. Might and daring? Might and daring, yeah, absolutely. And then it's going to try and avoid you. Um, it's going to go for oh. might and cunning. So it's going to try and bat the thing out of the way and kind of move off to the side. So I rolled a um, twenty, mm -hmm. but I have a skill called Mighty Thews. Where I use a pass muscle powered weapon. I can spend more momentum to roll any die. Can I use that to roll? I will say this is a muscle powered weapon. Yeah, because you're using your strength to launch this thing at it. So you can reroll that twenty. Yes, I'll take that. So how many successes have you got in total? One, two, three, four successes. Four successes. So you get two points of momentum because difficulty two. I only got one success. So it didn't dodge. Um, I'm going to say for this you can roll uh, four challenge dice, or combat dice, sorry. Uh, can I spend momentum to get more challenge you dice? You absolutely can. I will spend two to get two more. Okay. Let's try and knock this thing on its back at least. Yeah. We did want to have a look in the players guys open from the table. Yeah. There are some combat momentum spends, um, and the other oh. general momentum spends if you just want to refresh. That was a terrible yeah. roll. Oh wow. I only got three, and one was a yeah. uh, was a special except a special symbol. So yeah, so that would be the effect. There isn't really an effect on this object because it's not uh, a weapon in the traditional sense, but it does three points of stress in total, including totally. that effect. Yeah. Okay. So you take it, you throw it, and it hits it square in the face, um, and you see as it drops the fort, kind of throws it out of the way, and the way that it does it, this statue comes skidding past you into the wall and shatters. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these going next? I just, I did, I dodged. I'm like, I'm just run across the face. <laughs> run over here. So who's going next? Um, am I back in the room? Uh, you can. I say at this point, you probably, have, oh. you probably just came into the room as this. As this. Hey guys, I heard this roll. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you, you see the statue smash against the wall, just as it's gone um, past Partho. As you come into the room and you see this huge lumbering white ape ripping the place apart. Good. Okay, in my blind panic now, um, I am yeah, I'm jumping to my feet and um, running behind Beatrice. Okay. And 
skirt's no longer looking arrogant, it's just very much in a flutter now. Um, so, uh, yeah. So that would be your movement action. So yeah. combat's broken down into types of action. We don't have movements on the table today, so yeah. uh, I'm not defining them strictly. But yeah, you can actually, you can get behind Beatrice and you yeah. can still do an action, uh, a conflict action where you can make a test of some kind if you wish. Um, I think for now I'm going to wait for uh, these guys to, uh, I need to collect myself, I think, after okay. that hit. Um, yeah, I think after seeing you run away and hiding, um, <laughs> are white apes from the north, where the Okara are from? Do uh, I know anything special about them? They are not from the north, not no. From the north. Okay, um, not a special thing. But everybody on Marsu knows about the white okay. apes. They are terrifying creatures, massively strong. Trying to put one down alone is incredibly difficult, but it has been done. Can I roll to try and strike one of his weak points with my sword? Absolutely. So you're going to something like the bottom leg, something that would like to something, yeah, something that specifically is, I'm choosing that point because it's going to hurt him most. Yeah, go for it. Cool. I'm going to say the difficulty then is going to be two because you're pinpointing a really specific point. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll let you do that. And again, it's cool. going to be difficulty two for it to try and dodge. Okay. So it is quite big and it's in this uh, kind of store and it's not a big open space. Right, so he's cutting do you want to reason? buy any dice? Um, I don't have any momentum. You can always pay me a threat. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice as you like. Just the, uh, one. just the one. Okay. Okay, perfect. So I need to get under 15. Oh, okay. So I get three successes. Three successes. That is better than my two successes. Mm. Um, so you gain a point of momentum. Perfect. Um, and yeah, go ahead and uh, what, what are you using? Are you using your. I'm using my hook short sword. Your hook short sword, yes. okay. So I do one base damage. Uh, I'll spend that Sorry, hook short sword should be two base damage. I have two base damage. Two base damage, and if you want to spend the threat on momentum, that, you, yeah, can add, you can add bonus dice. So, I get. Oh, just one damage and an effect. Just one damage and an effect. Mm -hmm. So, swords have the sharp effect, which means they do uh, an extra point of damage to the injury stress trap. Yeah. Uh, this is a monster class creature, so it doesn't have individual stress traps like you guys do. Um, so it just takes up an extra point of stress. Right. So I was going to say let's wait for the siren to go across. Oh, yeah. siren. Yeah. 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 Sorry, right. we are in London occasionally. Sorry, there are ambulances and police driving around. All right, go for it. So, sorry, that was how many in total? So that was one damage and an effect. One damage and an effect. So, um, the effect does one point and then the actual quality of the effect activates is another. So it's another three points. Uh, of stress to this creature, and it roars out in pain as it tries to swat down at you. Um, was there anything else you wanted to do? So, so you haven't really made a conflict action this time, if there's anything else? Um, or are you just taking this time to kind of compose I'm yourself? taking this time to compose myself. Um, okay. I think I need it. Um, uh, so that next turn, having seen these guys uh, take it on, I am ready to flourish my short sword and really get back into the Okay, so in that case I'll say that this is, this is your like composing yourself, drawing yeah, your sword. Yeah, drawing my sword. And so it. this is the end of this round, which means everyone loses a point of momentum, the momentum force if you have any. Nobody has any? Okay. Um, the ape is going to try and swing again. And it's going to go for you this time because you just run up and go. I threw something at it. I was supposed to run up in New York. And I stabbed yeah. it in my foot. <laughs> uh, it's going to try and swing down at you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to spend these at this time. Uh, it's going to be difficulty one for you to try and defend, and it's going to be difficulty one for it to try and hit you because you're so close to it. Yeah. So uh, that is. I got two successes. I also have two successes. Two successes. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend a point of threat to let my active character take that success. And I'm going to roll okay. some challenge dice. So, so what did you defend with? Was so it? I defended with cunning and might. Cunning and might, yes. okay. Luckily, it's only two points of stress that you, you receive. Okay. So it's not that much. It just kind of clips you on the side. <laughs> so it's up to you which stress tracks you want to put that into. Cunning and might are on the same one. So I get might. two injuries. So it just really hurts. It just hurts. Oh. Okay, so it's back over to you guys. Who's going next? As you see this this thing back to Hallis. May I? Of course. Please. Um, <laughs> I draw my long sword. I wield it in both my hands. I brace my feet and I look it straight in the eye. And I leap across the room towards it, wielding the sword on my back and okay. swing it down in its face with the cut in half. 
The last bit might be a bit more difficult to know what they say. Uh, no, I don't know, because you are athletic, you, you do have the leaping thing, mm -hmm. so it's not any more difficult for you than it would be when you were standing. I was talking about the part where I cut it in half, that's the part. Oh, cutting sure. it in half? I think it might be difficult. I mean... After I roll it. If you really want to make it awesome, you could you could maybe spend your luck point and use that oh. to give you um, a critical success. I will do that, I will spend okay. my luck point for critical success. Spend luck point, you'll, you'll start with one. So, you spend that, so that gives you a dice that's already rolled on one, essentially. Okay. Um, and then you can roll, you still roll your other two dice, mm -hmm. uh, and you can still add extra if you want to. I'll add one extra. One extra. You pay me in front? Yes. Okay. So I have no money to spend. Oh, that's bad. I do, oh, shit, that's all, that's all successes. It's one, one two, three, four, five, six successes. Six Ooh. successes. That beats my yes. two. Uh, so in total, that is going to be... Five points of momentum. I will take those and I will spend them immediately to get some more dice. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to need good So there isn't an upper limit in Jump Harter of how many challenge dice you can buy if you have the momentum for it because you're going to have to spend that momentum because you've got, there is a cap on your momentum. Mm -hmm. So if you don't spend it, you're going to lose it. So, so one, two, three, four, oh, screw it. Let's go all five in. All five in. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go wild. You leap up and you, you watch as Beatrice brings this long sword down onto the top of this way. I am really bad at rolling dice. <laughs> you are really I am cool. horrific at rolling dice. <laughs> well, I have the sharp thing. What does that do? So for every effect, you do an extra point of damage. In that case, I do five out of all those dice. Five out of all of those dice? Yes. Okay. Five points. Is that including the effect does one anyway, plus one to the quality of yes. the Hey, oh, guys. no, I, I'm, yeah, the effect doesn't yeah. want to that's, that's... Yeah, that's, it's quite total. I wrote, I wrote five total, because I'm terrible at this. Um, in which case, you actually cause it an injury, because it, it takes five points of stress in one go. So as you bring it down, you actually manage to cleave into one of its arms, um, and it's like across the shoulder, and it rears back in pain, and it goes to throw you off, but you manage to kind of pull out and like, like jump back off of it. Um, it's going to have a lot of difficulty swinging for you guys now using Mike because it's taken that, that injury. It's going to be difficult. Um, it is like thrashing around in pain. There are bits of the shells starting to come down. Boxes are falling everywhere. Who is going next? Um, recovered from my shock and not wanting to be um, embarrassed or have my honour questioned uh, for not fighting, I'm going to dive in as well. Okay. Um, drawing my fancy balanced in great short sword. Mm -hmm. um, I, will, um, I will try and emulate what uh, Hallis did and um, go in and try and hamstring it, uh, dashing around the sides while you're bravely trying to force your longsword as deep into its head as it will get. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I guess that would be um, daring and cunning. I suppose, or uh, uh, maybe a reason. Um, you're probably going to have to use might because it is a mini weapon. Might. Yeah, no, I suppose. Might so. cunning if you wanted to, or I'd let you use might and reason if you're trying to kind of pinpoint that same weak spot. Because they're only pointing out yeah. by hand, so you're trying to pinpoint that on the other side, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to use might and reason on that one because I'm trying to figure it out. So, okay, I'm going to yeah. say it's going to be difficulty two because, again, you're, you're pinpointing your only spot. Sorry, guys, sorry. London again. Sorry. <laughs> Someone is dying out there, we should walk all the way up there and see that. Is this going well? It's going great! It's going great! Okay, great. so... <laughs> uh, right, so, um, can I, um, I'll buy another dice with some threats, if that's okay. Okay. Um, so I'm much better at rolling dice than you are, Beatrice. Oh, that's great! I thought you could actually hurt it. I completely um, failed defending against that, so... Okay, well, I got four successes on that one. Four successes, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's not bad. Um, so, uh, difficulty two, right? Difficulty two, so, so you get two, two points of momentum, momentum. Which I will spend straight away. Um, so, um, I've got base damage of two plus sharp plus two for that, so that's five all told. Uh, sorry, no, sharp just adds yeah, sharp um, is the effect. Sharp is the effect, yeah. yeah sorry, so, so keep one dice. Nice. Yeah. No, I mean, take one more. Take one. Yeah, sorry, yeah, that's right. Um, okay, cool. Um, so that is going to be four points of damage, four so uh, of damage. two damage and one effect. Okay, as you, you slash across it at the bottom, just as you've gone in over the head, and it's enough. It tumbles backwards, you pull it out, it starts to bleed, 
and then it knocks into a bunch of shelving that comes clattering down on top of it and it stops moving. I leave you guys alone for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so what I am going to do is I'm going to spend some more threat. Push us along just a little bit um, as you start to hear footsteps coming through that corridor. And there's only one other exit out of this room and it's through the corridor at the other end. And you start running forward, going through, hoping that maybe this thing will wake up and deal with that. <laughs> and you come through into a much larger holding area. It looks like it would have been once been used to house airships. And you come in, and it's odd. In this kind of circular fashion, curving away from you, it appears to be almost like bunks. Too high, or with beds. And just past those, another whole row of these things curving away from you. Imagine this goes in like a huge like concentric circle. And somewhere just in the centre, you can see this small flash of kind of pulsing light. It reminds you of light dancing off of a crystal. It kind of pulses and glitz and glams. And you can see there are people within these beds. And these wires that are coming up with this strange pulse. Beatrice. As you step forward into this room and you have a look, you recognise somebody. Laying on one of these beds with this strange device strapped to their cranium is Zadel Malas, who is an Odwa of the Heliumite Navy, a good friend of yours, and it seems one of the dignitaries that went missing in the disappearance. Well, good news, we found a dignitary. We are, we are on the right track. Better news, I find my friend, whom I shall instantly go to and rip this device off her head. As you go to walk forward, um, you hear the sounds of footsteps coming in behind you. You hear another terrifying roar from the balcony overhead as a dark shape begins to loop and climb its way down. And a woman's voice comes cutting clear across all of the sounds of the footsteps and the roaring and the hum of this machine. You have made an incredibly big mistake by coming here. And that's where we're going to end the session for today. Oh, no. As you've stumbled across apparently where some of these dignitaries are, a strange yeah. device, and terrible things about to happen. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, good times. And the cliffhangers. So, <laughs> good for you. Good you. have also enjoyed that. This is just the beginning session of what is going to be a few sessions long uh, playthrough of John Carter of Mars. Um, things will get even more interesting next week when they discover what's actually going on here and see if they make it out of uh, what looks to be an upcoming fight alive. So if you can and you are around and you're able to, please come back and watch us next week. We'll have some more posts up with information for times and dates as well. Don't forget, on the web store, you can uh, buy John Carter of Mars with a 10% discount with our lovely discount code, CoolCarter2019. Um, thank you guys for playing. It's been really thank awesome. You, we really hope you've enjoyed it. And I, I, think, I think that is us for this week. But we will be back next week with more wonderful John Carter of Mars.